Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel Python Freaks. So today I am back with yet another interesting topic and which is based upon one of the most confusing question which every fresher has to face when he or she is entering into the IT world. So we will try to simplify this complicated question and I would request you to watch this video till the very end as this will not only give you the fair amount of knowledge about the various skills and technology which is trending in the IT industry but as a bonus tip, we'll point out which two paths I would suggest to a fresher if he or she is entering the IT world. So without any further delay, let's start the video. So any guesses what all career options are waiting for you behind this door if you are a fresher? I hope at least half of the options definitely you can guess. So let's break the suspense. So at a very broader level, I've highlighted the major career prospect which I would recommend to a fresher if he is entering the IT world. And I would also request to don't just get deviated or biased with the fancy advertisement that they see or hear on internet. So as you can see, these are very, very descriptive topic and covering this entirely in one video will be a little bit difficult task. So we'll try to give you an overview of all these topics and we'll make a dedicated video on each of these topics separately in our coming videos. And I would also request you to don't skip this video as I will be discussing very shortly about the various options. But this information will be very important and very valuable, which you might need in future if you're entering this world of IT. So let's start with the first option, which is data science. And I don't think I need to explain much about how fruitful this career is presently. In 2021, we are actually totally submerged with data. And you might have seen that very popular image about the various activities that happens in one minute on internet. Like there are 4.7 millions of videos being watched 190 millions of emails being sent, 90 million texts are being sent, etc, etc. So this will give you the correct picture what a data science career mean in 2021. And the funny part is it's increasing exponentially. Now we'll come to the main point. What does actually data scientists do? So in one line, if I have to explain, then we'll say data science or data scientist turns the raw data into valuable insight that an organization needs in order to grow or compete. Now, talking about the domain, be it finance, scientific research, health, retail, every domain needs data scientist. So this was pretty much about the data science as a career option. And if you haven't understood the entire structure of this, you don't need to worry. We'll be uploading a dedicated video on this soon within one or two days as this is the most requested video which has came to me. Now the next one in the list is machine learning and AI. Now like we are moving towards automation in every field. So a lot of emphasis is, is being made on how to make machine more smarter and more humanly. And this is the reason this job profile is booming like anything. But before you directly jump into the pool, please make sure you have a strong mathematical skills you are very thorough with understanding the com complex algorithm and post that you have fulfilled all this requirement then only go for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now the next one in the list is ethical hacking or we can also call it as penetration testing. So as you know security is the key aspect of every organization or application and this is where ethical hacking or security testing comes into picture. Now let's first try to understand one by one what is the actual flow of ethical hacking. So let's start with the first question. What does an ethical hacker do? An ethical hacker works like a hacker but the only difference is they do it with permission. In present time, data is growing by leaps and bounds and in that process so is the cyber threats. So this is where ethical hacking comes into picture. To avoid this cyber threat, we need to 
analyze all the threats and try to rectify it or minimize it or uh, remove it now the next question is what all technical skills is required if i if i want to go in ethical hacking so the first thing is you should you should have a sound knowledge of all the operating system be it windows be it mac or linux all the three you should have a very good understanding of the operating system the second skills to have is networking software and a sound knowledge about the application hardware now let's move to the next question what is the scope of ethical hacker we are living in a world with lots of online transaction e-commerce website and purchases happening simultaneously and cyber attacks are prone to happen and such scenario cyber security is must and being a ethical hacker it's beneficial for an organization to look pro look for professional who can behave like a hacker expose the network vulnerabilities and then try to hack that system and if they are success like if they succeed in that so they should rectify it that how to block that particular channel so this is the actually like overall scope of ethical hacker and uh, to be frank this is actually my uh, personal suggestion to go for this particular stream this stream is actually a uh, very scopeful now the next one in the queue is cloud computing so let's try to understand first what actually the cloud computing is so in simple terms if i have to explain cloud computing is actually the management of computing services such as storage servers data networking and all those stuffs over the internet and not actually storing all these things into physical storage and the reason why this is a very good prospect is more and more companies are turning towards cloud based services from their traditional data centric approach so many career opportunities have popped up in the market now what are the skills that is required for moving to cloud so first is like you should have a good amount of knowledge about the networking storage and virtualization now let's talk about what are the major service provider that are there in clouds the first one is uh, you might be knowing aws amazon web services google cloud microsoft azure so these are the first three common and the most widely used one then ibm cloud is also there alibaba cloud is also there sap is also there and vmware is also there but the um, aws google cloud and microsoft azure these are the most prominent one now suppose if you want to uh, pursue your career in in this cloud so you should go for some certification like all the major services like uh, like uh, amazon amazon also gives some aws certification same is the case for microsoft azure and uh, same is case of gcp also google also provides with different levels of certification so and uh, so if you want to land a job in this cloud you should have at least one of the certification from the top 3 like uh, azure uh, google cloud platform or aws aws is the most widely used okay and the most interesting part is all these three certification comes in different levels like it's not like uh, you can you can directly you should go for the master level okay uh, the exams are for beginner to master to intermediate and based on your different roles like if you are an architect you should go for that architect level exam if you are a beginner okay you should go for the beginner level exam now let's talk about the various job profiles that we have in cloud so cl uh, basically there are cloud architect cloud engineer cloud system administrator and cloud data engineer so basically cloud engineer is basically responsible for monitoring maintaining patching the different cloud related issues cloud architect is actually his job is for uh, creating cloud based networks merging multiple remote servers and all those stuffs so this was pretty much about the cloud so the next one is devops so what does the devops pro profile basically do so devops profile is basically uh, coordinating with different development teams quality assurance teams and it operations team and release the software as soon as possible 
basically what it means in simple terms is like suppose a application is being developed or a software is being developed so to release that particular software the, like there are various teams involved in it like there are there is um, the actual development team who is developing that application that is there uh, the qa is involved like who is actually testing that uh, uh, um, testing that particular software and giving a green signal then there is the it operation guys so basically devops profile is to coordinate with uh, all this and release the uh, software as soon as possible so uh, this is actually the mostly about the devops profile now let's come to what all basically devops tools is required like what all tools they work on so mostly they work on git github that is for the source code management they work mostly on jenkins like for creating the ci cd pipeline uh, they work on uh, docker and kubernetes for the containerization platform and kubernetes for the this thing uh, container or orchestration and um, so this was like basically the overview of like what all tools they work on and uh, for writing their scripts they use uh, ansible puppet and a uh, shit now let's come to the uh, last point what is the scope of devops so now as you can see there are so many cloud development uh, like mostly all the companies are moving to cloud and uh, uh, they are migrating from this uh, traditional data centric to cloud and this is where devops comes into picture so in the last two years there has been a lot of uh, like mostly all the companies are uh, having a separate devops team for this migration for this releasing this thing and running all their tests and all their uh, applications on cloud only and this all this entire things is handled by devops so the last one but definitely not the least one is test automation so first let's try to understand what actually automation testing is so automation testing is a automated way to perform the software testing so what does this mean like in a typical environment all the tests are executed like the expected input and the actual output is matched then all the results are captured for all the tests and then drafted and then all the results are combined and then sent to the respective owners this is the entire thing is in case of manual testing now the same thing can be automated like for all these steps whatever we have explained it's just like one time job we need to write the corresponding script in it script for it that can be written in java python or any of the programming language and it's just a one time job and all the above activities be it uh, capturing the result be it sending the report and that thing can be done via test automation so we don't need to explicitly verify it and all the uh, manual efforts can be eliminated from test automation now automation testing can be done for it can be for uh, functional testing it can be for sanity smoke or user usability testing any of the above testing now uh, when it comes to automation there are different types of te uh, test automation like we can do for auto api automation we can do for um, uh, this performance testing so all these uh, uh, various uh, uh, brackets are there then we can use test automation like if you want to do some api testing we can uh, python has uh, given various libraries for it okay we can use uh, make we can make use of that uh, uh, like that particular module same way for performance testing we can use jmeter or we can use uh, uh, load runner so overall test automation also has a very good career prospects and this is actually the most underrated uh, career scope uh, when it comes to like when when it comes to, uh, to job profile in the it so with this we have come to the end of the video and like i promised i will give my personal opinion which which two career path i would suggest to a fresher and it is cloud computing and ethical hacking i know you might be expecting data science or machine learning but somehow i feel like these two career path are very scopeful but are very underrated whereas like in current situation everyone is talking about machine learning and data science but these two paths are also very scopeful so this is just my personal opinion so with this we have come to the end of the video and hope you like the content if yes then please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and would request you again to please stay tuned 
because lot of interesting videos like this are on its way. Thanks a lot once again for watching the video to the very end and see you all in my next video. Bye.